Could SpaceX really land Starship on the moon without traditional legs? It sounds like a tiny detail, but it could decide how fast Artemis moves. Starship HLS has to land astronauts on rough ground with no tower, no crane, and no giant robotic arms waiting to catch it. That's why landing gear suddenly feels like the most important unsexy hardware on the whole vehicle. Legs add mass. Legs add moving parts. Legs add failure modes. But the moon does not forgive mistakes, so the choice is not simple. This question is coming up while the space race is getting loud again. Many people inside the US space world are worried America could lose the next big lunar milestone to China. And this fear is not just internet chatter. Former NASA administrator Jim Bridenstein has warned about it, and so has Mike Gold, who previously worked in NASA's international and interagency office. The message is that China is moving with focus and resources, and it has openly targeted a crude lunar landing around 2030. On the US side, NASA is fighting problems that are not purely technical. Policy swings can squeeze budgets, leadership changes can reset priorities, and Artemis itself is complex. It links the Space Launch System rocket, the Orion spacecraft, the human landing system, gateway plans, and a web of commercial partners. NASA has said this campaign ties together multiple demanding systems. That means one slip can ripple through the entire schedule. And the deeper truth is that a sustained human presence on the moon is not just a rocket story, it's a logistics story. You need a supply chain stretching hundreds of thousands of kilometers. You need lots of propellant. You need repeated resupply missions. You need power, communications, spare parts, surface tools, and the ability to fix things far from Earth. When the goal is permanence, complexity shows up whether you like it or not. So why does China's steady progress feel so threatening? Because it triggers a painful question. If China can build momentum, why can't the country that pioneered human spaceflight match that pace? One answer is that the United States still has a huge edge. Fast private innovation. SpaceX is the clearest example. Their testing style is relentless. Their iteration is quick. And their design instinct is often to simplify. The best part is no part. That mindset leads straight back to Starship HLS. Are landing legs truly essential? On Earth, SpaceX wants Starship to return without legs by being caught by the tower-mounted arms often nicknamed Mechazilla. Removing legs saves weight and reduces the hardware that has to survive landing. But the moon has no tower and no catcher. Starship HLS must touch down, stay upright, and support crew operations with nothing but what it brings with it. Adding legs, though, is not free. Legs raise the center of gravity and add mass, which eats payload. They also add mechanical complexity. And stability on the moon is a real challenge. The surface is uneven, dusty, and unpredictable. There are rocks, slopes, craters, and soft regolith. A leg can land on a buried boulder or sink deeper than expected. If one leg sits lower than the others, the whole vehicle can lean. If it leans too far, it can tip. We've already seen how unforgiving this can be with smaller robotic landers. Intuitive Machines' Odysseus landed in February 2024, but ended up tilted. Then the company's Athena lander in March 2025 also tipped onto its side after touchdown near the lunar South Pole. Those were uncrewed missions. For Starship HLS, the stakes are human lives. That's why some people suggest a bold alternative. What if Starship didn't land upright at all? What if it landed horizontally? Variations of that idea pop up in old lunar base concepts, where a large vehicle lands vertically and is later shifted into a sideways posture to act more like a surface habitat. The moon's lower gravity makes the forces smaller, and a sideways hull would spread weight across a much larger area. In theory, that could reduce the chance of one foot sinking and triggering a tip over. But reality pushes back fast. Even if you want the vehicle to end up horizontal, you still need a controlled touchdown. Something has to absorb impact. Something has to keep the craft stable in the final seconds. And the biggest obstacle is propulsion and control. Starship lands vertically because its engines point down and can throttle and steer through the final descent. 
a sideways landing would point those main engines in the wrong direction, and remove the control authority Starship depends on. To attempt it, Starship would need major redesigns, dedicated side thrusters, new propellant plumbing, new tanks or feed lines, and new control logic. That adds mass and complexity, which is the exact opposite of what HLS needs if the goal is speed and safety. Then come the human factors. The crew hatch, internal layout, and surface access systems are built around an upright ship. Put the vehicle on its side, and the door placement becomes a problem. Moving cargo becomes harder. Getting astronauts in and out becomes awkward. When you combine the technical and human hurdles, the conclusion is hard to escape. A vertical landing on wide, strong legs is still the most practical path. And SpaceX does have experience here. Falcon 9 has been doing propulsive landings for years. It uses four legs that stay folded during flight and deploy just before touchdown. They are strong and light, and they work. The trade-off is that Falcon 9's legs don't neatly retract on their own after landing. Ground crews handle that later, because Earth has crews and equipment waiting. Starship is far bigger, and is meant to operate where nobody is waiting to help. That changes the requirements. With a 9 meter diameter and a tall stance, Starship HLS likely needs more than four legs. Most concepts show six, spreading the load and improving stability. Six also gives redundancy. If one leg has trouble, the others can still keep the vehicle upright. That same redundancy mindset shows up in other parts of Starship's design. SpaceX has not publicly detailed how Starship's legs will deploy and retract, but the mechanism matters. Hydraulics are attractive because they can take huge loads and might help level the vehicle on uneven terrain. But a leak in space is a nightmare, and repairs on the moon are not easy. That's why electromechanical systems get so much attention. Electric motors and geared actuators can be precise and repeatable. They don't rely on stored gases as consumables. The simple vision is that the legs extend during descent, lock into a wide stance, absorb the load, and later retract back into bays so the vehicle can fly again without outside help. Now zoom out from hardware to politics, because it shapes what NASA can actually fund. In the White House's fiscal year 2026 budget request, the administration proposed retiring SLS and Orion after Artemis III and cancelling the Gateway program, shifting toward more commercial systems. But Congress pushed back. In July 2025, a reconciliation package known as the One Big Beautiful Bill Act included nearly $10 billion in space-related provisions available through 2032. It directed about $4.1 billion toward SLS work for Artemis IV and V, plus additional funding for Orion, Gateway, and the International Space Station. This tug-of-war matters because it affects how fast NASA can simplify. It also explains why Just Do It With Starship is not a clean switch you can flip. Artemis is not only a technical program. It's a political structure with commitments, contracts, and international partners. Still, the idea of a simpler architecture keeps returning. Back in 2017, Elon Musk described what was then called the BFR, the vehicle that evolved into Starship as a craft that could support lunar missions with in-space refueling, without making propellant on the moon. The idea was to refuel in a highly elliptical Earth orbit, and then go to the lunar surface and back. Fewer vehicles, fewer transfers, fewer steps that all have to work perfectly, but there is a hard truth in the middle of that dream. In-space refueling is the linchpin. Starship can't launch once and do a full round trip with a useful payload. It needs multiple tanker flights, transferring propellant in orbit before departure. If refueling fails, the plan collapses. If it works, everything else becomes more flexible. SpaceX has been building towards that future through repeated flight tests, gathering data on guidance, control, and thermal protection during high-energy returns. But human rating is a different level of pressure. Orion has a classic launch abort system that can yank the crew away during a failure. 
Starship does not have that traditional escape tower, so the safety strategy leans harder on reliability across the whole system. And that's where NASA's cost abate comes roaring back. NASA has explored ways to lower SLS costs, including shifting toward a services-style contract model through the Exploration Production and Operations Contract, or EPOC, tied to a Boeing-Northrop joint venture called Deep Space Transport. But NASA's Inspector General has warned that the biggest cost-cutting goals were aspirational and not backed by solid analysis, and that early per-launch costs would likely remain above $2 billion. So we end up back on the ground, literally. Landing legs might not be glamorous, but on the moon, they are survival hardware. Starship HLS can't be caught. It can't count on ground infrastructure. It has to land and stay stable on a surface that loves to trip vehicles over. Horizontal landing makes for fun theory, but it demands redesigns that would likely slow everything down. The fast path is still the boring one, a vertical landing on legs that are wide, strong, and redundant enough to survive a bad patch of regolith and still protect the crew. 